Um, my name is Shane. Uh, these are all my details. I have many other labels, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, the most important, of course, being that uh, I've been podcasting for a long time. Uh, How long? Since 2004. Mm. Wow. Actually, mm. my parents gave me a tape recorder in 1976. So I have hours and hours of, of audio that I will not be sharing with you today. I'll be talking about how Linda Carter was hot because she was bare up here and bare down here. Which then, of course, precipitated a conversation with my parents going, what do you mean by bare? <laughs> of course, you know, I was, what, five? But um, the most important slide here that I have today is this one. This is my dog, Faith. She has a Twitter account, at Faith Puck. Make sure you follow. If you don't, I'll know. But um, the full disclosure, I'm freaked out right now because I hate talking in front of people. <laughs> which is weird, because for 25 years I've done improv comedy. So if you want me to hump an invisible eight-foot banana, no problem. I will do it for you for the next 45 minutes. But uh, when I talk about stuff that... Well, should I start? Okay. But, um... Yeah, I can feel my heart now. This is weird. It's such a weird thing. But, um... Why should you listen to me at all? I mean, I'm a dude that's got a dog. And, uh, most people don't know who I am. They just call me nerd. Which is why I wear this pretty much every day. Um, but the reality is, I've written a bunch of books. I've written, uh, I helped a friend of mine, uh, Susanna Gardner, who's really cool. We did a, uh, the second, third, and fourth editions of this book, which was very strange because when we first wrote the second edition, Twitter didn't exist, Facebook didn't exist, none of these platforms existed. It was just mind-blowing. Then as time went on, we had to add in stuff like, how does Twitter actually work with blogging and podcasting, and what eventually became blogging. Um, so, I'll just let people come in. Hey, how's it going? How's hey. it going, man? By the way, thank you all for coming, because I am from the West Coast, and when I got here the other day, I'm like, who the hell is going to show up to this thing? I mean, really. There was all these things going, how to monetize, how to make money, I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, that's why I wrote this one, because I thought, you know, it would be funny to actually have somebody come up and say, you're all going to die, and you know what, if you're not podcasting, you're going to miss out. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, but I'll get to that. Uh, so yeah, so I wrote three of these books, and then uh, a couple years ago I wrote this one, How to Be a Blogger and a Vlogger, and I had to force them to actually add a chapter about podcasting, because they were like, ah, podcasting, whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to write this without it. So, uh, yeah, so a couple years ago I wrote that book, and uh, it's geared for kids between the age of sort of 8 and 14 is sort of their demographic. And uh, imagine trying to write anything for the internet explaining to a kid that eventually, some, at some point, somebody's going to call you an asshat. <laughs> and it took me like two months to write, what is the internet etiquette you should be practicing. And then, of course, who, who follows what's going on on YouTube right now? <laughs> yeah, have you heard what's in the news just this past week or so? About how pedophiles are using it to uh, find young vloggers online? <laughs> oh yeah. Just Google that and you'll, you'll find it. It's, it's just for the past, like, <laughs> seven days. <laughs> so imagine my uh, horror last week, because I'm writing another one called The Vlogging Handbook for Kids. <coughs> so here I am over the past few months, you know, taking everything that's in my head and trying to distill it down to very little bite-sized chunks, which is harder than it seems. And having to tell the publisher, hey, um, about this pedophile thing, what should I do? And they said, just keep going, keep going, ignore it, don't pay attention. I said, okay, but, uh, yeah. So this is sort of the other side of how people talk about the internet. 
you have really positive things going on in the world where you can talk all kinds of information about how to do uh, a podcast online, how to do a vlog, how to, how to start a blog, all that kind of fun stuff, and then you run into someone who might like me, who says things like, yes, but, because I am a purist when it comes to talking about podcasting, because at the very beginning, back in 2000 and whatever, um, I was already podcasting. I was recording audio and putting it online. It was before you could subscribe to stuff and that kind of thing. So I've got to see this whole evolution of how the technology has made it more accessible, which is great. But at the same time, I'm weird. I like to pay attention to the nitty gritty of what's going on behind the Iron Curtain. The Iron Curtain? Iron Curtain. <laughs> <laughs> behind the uh, the cheddar curtain. So, uh, yeah. Now I'm going to take dance break. <laughs> that made me feel better. I don't know about you, but it made me feel really good. Um, what the hell is my next slide? Ah, oh, yeah. So that's what this whole talk is about. Is that um, about five years ago. I was kind of at the top of my game. I was publishing regularly. I was doing all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, I have about five podcasts. Uh, if you Google my name, you'll find them. Um, but I stopped. And I stopped for one very large reason. I got stuff like this. This is the nicest one of the bunch. Yeah. So... <laughs> What happened is that I put out some podcasts that I was talking about some stuff that apparently was controversial. I didn't realize it at the time. And I got about two or three hundred of these. Because for some reason, because I wrote a couple of books, people tend to pay attention to your name. So don't ever write a book. I never recommend it. Because you become a target. And uh, so yeah, so I got a whole bunch of these kind of messages. And then I became fearful. I just stopped dead in my tracks and I stopped publishing because I suddenly felt like I feel right now. God, they're judging me. Christ, oh, oh, they're still there. Why won't they leave? But that's how you feel when you're trying to create and trying to record and you're trying to do stuff. Because naturally when you take uh, a, a, a recorder and you get excited about doing something, and I saw this way back when blogging was first starting, that people got really excited. They're like, oh yeah! I can totally go, hey, hey, do you know, I've got a really cool podcast, it's awesome. No, I, I do a blog too, and I have a photo, you heard of Flickr? No? What? <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Um, so, I've lived through all this, kind of, oh, I was going to go through that later. <laughs> Sorry, is there anything expensive in there? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I had my eye on. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've, I've gone through this whole process of going from being excited and if you are, uh, if you do this long enough, you will identify what I like to call the Kool-Aid drinkers. People that are on it right away and they're so excited, but they lack substance. They lack that fire of why do people do this in the first place? Why do you sit a recorder down on your desk or in your living room or wherever and hit the record button and start talking? Why do people do that? It makes no sense. Why would people start <coughs> writing paragraphs of text back in, when I started my blog, it was 1995, I think. And it was one of those moments where you just have that oomph. And I had it for years until stuff like this started coming through my inbox. That was an email, by the way. So I know who sent it to me. It wasn't like an anonymous thing. It was somebody I knew. This is. I picked this one, they're not here, unfortunately, because otherwise this would be a different conversation out in the hallway. But, I can't believe I have this slide up that long. <laughs> ah, there we go. So, so I've been going through this process lately of, of trying to come up with some way where people can actually have little tiny tools to be able to fight this kind of crap. Because the internet, as time has gone on, is getting far more toxic. And it's not because the technology is some magic that's going on or an algorithm's gone haywire. It's really because the people in general are kind of toxic in a way. They have those negative thoughts. And when you want to, when you want to express stuff to people, 
the very exciting sort of, yeah, let's totally do this because my podcast is going to be this big. And I always tell people, no, no, it's not. Uh, you got to start at the beginning like everyone. And uh, as people kind of want to express themselves as, who, I mean, who here has read comments on anything on the internet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you hear these things where uh, you have like two or three people that are like, first, and then you have a couple of people going, hey, that's all right, that's uh, great information. And then the rest of them are people that really need to leave the basement or something. You know, we have this assumption that, you know, these little trolls in a dark cave somewhere just typing away saying negative things about people that they don't even know. And uh, lately, actually, on YouTube, uh, because I'm writing this book, I'm watching a lot of vloggers right now. Uh, there's this thing, a hashtag called, what do you assume about me? And there's a lot of people actually recording stuff like, here are the 20 questions I received from people on the internet. And basically, it's like 20 minutes of somebody talking and debunking everything as they go. It's like, no. I mean, who would assume I have a pug? If you don't have a pug, you're missing out, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, well, I derailed myself by thinking about my dog. It's so sad. <laughs> um, over here now. Oh, there's people over there. Hi! What's up? Hey, you in the hat. What? what who are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to stand up and go, Yeah, it's me! <laughs> Cross promotion, that kind of thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyways, the tools that I've been coming up with are little tiny things. I stole one a little while ago, and it's called the, uh, the uh, one, two, three rule. Where have you, have you heard of this? Where, uh, I've forgotten who wrote it, um, a nice lady whose name is totally out of my head at the moment, but she wrote this book called, uh, like, uh, Fancy Title. And uh, basically, <laughs> you read this book and you could distill it down to just counting to three. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. And then there's also, like, you can count to ten for certain things. But essentially, what it means is that when you encounter uh, cute pugs, you'll immediately want to write about them or record about them, or you'll want to do something, you'll want to express how you feel. Because, uh, as I said in the little description of why you're here, which I totally knew was a con job. Wow, tough crowd, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, was about knowing who you are, or knowing who you are, like who are you as an individual. And words get thrown around like authenticity, uh, actually that's pretty much the only way it gets thrown around. But who's heard that? Be authentic on the internet? Great. And who hasn't, really? Wow, well, you heard it here first. <laughs> so, being authentic on the internet really, to me, means something far more important. And that's being vulnerable. Where you're able to express yourself uh, without any fear. And I hope that I can get you out of that, that uh, or get you into that, that mindset, because you will eventually wonder if you like to suck whale dick. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, you get that kind of stuff and you start to believe it. Not necessarily that one, but the other things, the ones that are a little more personal, the ones where they actually know you uh, a little bit more and then they get in under your skin a little bit, but then you get repetition. And as I said, for that one uh, post that I made, I got more like 310 comments all over the place. And that was when I recognized that I was starting to really succumb to this stuff, which I thought I was impervious. I've been around since the beginning. I had a blog before blogs were a thing. How would I, me, Shane, I am tough and strong and I've seen everything, but I completely shut down and I had no idea why. It was just out of the blue. I realized I didn't want to record anymore. I didn't want to be vulnerable on the internet anymore because somebody was going to say something horrible. Actually, let me pause for a second. How many people have actually received something that was negative for anything that they posted on the internet? Okay, good. I'm not alone. I was beginning to think I was the only one here talking. Um, but, uh, but the way you get around that, for me anyway, is that you have to recognize that you are a human being and that you are going to get that kind of crap, and you just have to keep going. You have to recognize why you are doing what you're doing. Do you have a hand up? Sorry? Oh, sorry. I, did. I thought you were just leaning against the wall in a dramatic fashion. <laughs> so, just curious, like you're saying you got 300 uh, comments on that one controversy post. What is that about? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. He just wanted to say it. No, what was that? <laughs> Am I going to get 311? <laughs> 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 
Actually, I'm not going to tell you what it was about because I actually deleted it. I got rid of it. I ended up trashing like four or five episodes. Uh, the, 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 the crux of it was that I didn't agree with some people that I knew, and I just kind of voiced my own opinion. And, uh, and that's where that all came from. And so it was, it was, it was an online conversation through a bunch of uh, different websites. Can I, ask, I just want to ask you about the uh, negative comments, mm -hmm. other than just, I guess, understanding people will just make them and maybe getting a thick skin. Is there any sort of um, advice you can give, like, I'm not, I've never been in this world yet where I have to respond to something like that? Do you just go silent? Do you respond? Do you? Uh, it depends. Try to smooth and, over, be a, you know. Like, well, you... one of the things that that uh, started happening, I would say, probably around 2010 or so, is that comments stopped being turned on on websites, mm -hmm. where you had uh, the CBC lady that was here earlier. Um, the CBC had a huge problem. Are you, are you still there? Hey! <laughs> um, the CBC had such a problem with comments that they had to make policies and had to enforce different rules for things because. Even institutions like the CBC, which I love, um, <laughs> were, I mean, they were a, a basically a poster child of what you should do, which essentially is uh, any time you have somebody was, that was going to post anything, you had to have, you had to basically jump through some hoops to actually be allowed to do it. Um, I'm not sure, is that still the case now? I mean, yeah. I'm going back in time. I think, I think so. And they also, like, on certain stories where they expect people will be terrible, they just they just ban commenting. Yeah, and, that, and that's like especially on indigenous uh, yeah. post things as well. So anything about any indigenous culture stuff on the CBC, you, like you can't even post comments. Like it's just not there. Um, that's happened on YouTube, and, and the whole pedophile thing that I referenced, which you really should look at because it's really terrifying at some, at some level, but at the same time, it sort of points out what we have to deal with as a culture, and the. Uh, what they started doing is that uh, there's facial recognition, there's age checking and gating and things like that. Um, that if you're a certain age and you get authorization from your parents, uh, comments are never allowed on your videos. So no matter what you post online, uh, it's, it's basically a no-go. So to answer your question, um, there is no perfect answer. Uh, the only thing you can do is either filter them based on somebody actually looking at them, which can be a real time suck and be a real heavy sort of burden on, on a single person. Like somebody who's writing just for themselves, you know, and you're, if your blog actually explodes becomes popular, then suddenly you have, you know, say maybe a thousand comments a day, and you, there's no way you're going to be able to read them all. Um, you should try, uh, is sort of the adage that people use, but ultimately you have to really uh, just kind of go with it. And eventually, um, I have a lot of friends who are bloggers just by themselves, and they, like me, have turned off comments entirely because I don't want to spend time anymore dealing with them because that's on... I mean, this, this is the other thing that I learned, is that you have to really, you know, get the thick skin and just say, that's on them, I'm not going to even reply. Unless they have a good point, and there are still constructive people going, hey, Shane, your talk was really good, but you rambled all over the place, kind of like your podcasts. And I would go, delete. So, um, <laughs> see, I have to be humping something apparently in order to feel comfortable up here. So just bear with me. Um, so yes, yeah, so that, so that, hopefully so that sort of gives you a roundabout. When answer. you allow people to comment, I'm sorry. Do you have the ability before it goes up to? Yes. Oh. And that's and that's kind of what I mean by filtering is that yeah. um, most software platforms that, that run uh, websites will have the commenting system in them, and it, there will be like a queuing system where you can say, yes, comments are welcome, but I will review them before they're live on the website. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's actually what I did for a while as well. Um, so yeah, uh, hang on one second. There was a question over here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So you had over 300 negative comments. How many positive comments did you have? Uh, five or so. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the thing is that. Sadly, the internet just skews heavily towards the, the negative side of it. Um, I don't know why, as I said earlier, people are kind of toxic anyway. But the problem is, when do you feel, actually, who uses Gmail as, as an email system? So there used to be an add-on called the beer goggles. And it was a thing you'd plug in uh, or turn on for your thing, uh, for your email, so that between, I think it was like 2 a.m. and 7 a.m., it wouldn't let you send email. It would actually say, are you sure? Like, it would pop up a thing. <laughs> because apparently, Google, Google, as monstrous as they are, uh, learned that the negative stuff goes out around those hours. Because you've, you've 
you know, you go, hey guys, let's go for a pint. Yeah, totally, let's have five. Okay, great, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna tell him exactly what I think of him, you jackass! <laughs> and that happens, so. Uh, I don't know if the beer goggles thing is, any, is around anymore, since they're new it's refresh, but. Well, I was going to say, in regards to the beer goggles, I'm not sure if it is, but Gmail still has a feature where it'll delay the, the undo send. undo thing, yeah. So yeah. you got, maybe after you hit send, then for 30 seconds, you know, you can hit and call it back. Exactly, and, uh, and I turn that on too. So yeah. that, I mean, mainly because of spelling, but you know. Uh, I'm going to go way back there. So you had a question? Yeah, uh, so I know that a lot of platforms, you can just disable the comments altogether, and yeah. then just not let anyone comment positive or negative on your, on your content. Would you say that's better than just receiving a whole bunch of hate? Or, because there's the chance of getting a positive comment as well. What is happening, and I'm getting really nerdy here, I should have actually had my nerd alert uh, slide up first. Uh, because I've been doing this so long, I, I could talk for 400 hours about something nerdy like that. But essentially, um, I'll use an example that I, that I used in a presentation a little while ago to some clients was uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. Who's heard of Joe Rogan? Mm -hmm. uh, he does this live stream for, I think, three hours every day almost. And uh, you'll notice actually that his comments are disabled. So you don't, you don't actually, you can't say anything. But the thing that is happening in the <coughs> vlogging arena, since that's really foremost in my mind, is you have people doing live streaming, and then they have these things on YouTube, it's called the Super Chat, on Twitch.tv, it's called something else. Um, but essentially, it's a comment fest that's rolling by as the people are talking. So, um, and I sadly found a whole bunch of really young people that really need parental supervision. Uh, where they had a bunch of, they had, they were turning on their phones and walking around, and the worst one that I saw was uh, this girl, she turned it on, she was probably 12, maybe 11, somewhere in there, uh, walking around her house, which is the worst thing you can do as, as putting information out there, uh, because some top bloggers have actually had their houses raided because they figured out what the, plan, the layout of your house was and where your stuff was. Um, yeah, it gets really dark, so I'm not here to bum you out, I'm trying to here to you know, sort of get you past it, but these things do happen. Um, but anyway, this 12-year-old girl's walking around her house, and then she put her phone down uh, in in their sort of rumpus room in the basement, and her brother was there playing some video game on a somewhere TV off off camera, and she and she turned around to the camera and said, "I'm not going to tell you where I live because that." And she it was like she'd read my you actually probably read my book I hope about how what information you shouldn't say online, and then her brother goes, "I'm in Indiana." <laughs> and I sat there going, okay, um, that's, that's okay, it's, he didn't like say, on 4th Street in Bar! <laughs> but, uh, um, but the comments immediately fired up at that point. And it was very thinly veiled sexual innuendo that I'm sure she didn't understand. And uh, I wrote to her later, said, don't do that again because that's just not a good thing. Um, <laughs> Where are your parents? Uh, that was, uh, like halfway through, I'm, uh, I watched for like 10 minutes before she finally turned it off. But I was like, where are your parents? Where are, they're not, they're not, they're, I didn't see them in the house. You were young, your brother's younger. What the hell? Uh, this is not 1975 anymore. Um, so anyway, I gotta get off this topic. Oh, does that answer anybody's question? <laughs> um, uh, ooh, I feel so dirty now. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, so talk about pugs. Okay, great. Well, that'll, that'll end off the thing. Um, so I stop. Is this? Oh, there you go. So uh, I'm not going to leave that. So, um, so a little while ago, I was expressing myself, or expressing my thoughts to uh, my neighbors, uh, because I live in Vancouver, and I live right across from a brewery called the Red Truck Brewery. Which means that. Which means that. <laughs> improv theater, man. Are your parents home? Are my parents home? <laughs> my pug is home. She's guarding the house. Um, so I was, I was complaining aloud, saying, you know, as pints get in your body, you tend to complain more. There's seats down here if you want to come up. Okay, go there. Okay, cool. Um, and I just said, you know, I, I, I'm trying to write this book and I, and I just, I can't get out of this negative mindset because of a few years ago and blah, 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 blah. And he said, dude, fucking shut up. 
And this is what he says almost every week now, because since he's coined it, is only so many Friday nights left. Basically to say, you only have so much time on this planet, get over yourself, you just have to power through. I said, okay. And then I said the word authenticity to him, and then he said something I won't repeat. So, <laughs> but, uh, but essentially, once I realized that that actually was what I should talk about, I started to sort of brainstorm some stuff. So, um, I'm trying to think of what else I had in my takeaway list. Does anybody have it open? No? Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, do I have a crappy slide with it? Yes, there we go. Um, so, recognize your authenticity. I just blabbed about that for however long. Uh, challenge yourself to do the insane thing. Now, the insane thing is that last December, I decided to join in my little group of podcasting friends uh, this thing called the 12 Podcasting Days of Christmas. But I didn't want to do just 12 days of me going, yeah, so uh, I went Christmas shopping. Credit card got hacked again, which happened to me this Christmas, by the way. That sucks when you're trying to shop. And then uh, I said, you know, I want to do something insane. So I created uh, like a, a, a fiction for, for uh, like on the CBC, you have a lot of these sort of uh, radio plays. I still call them radio plays, sorry. Um, I created a radio play where essentially I inserted myself sort of Stephen King style into the story that I was hanging out with Santa Claus and we were going on adventures and I think there was a trench run and uh, then the Millennium Falcon somehow worked its way in there. But essentially, <laughs> it was me saying to myself that I really needed to do something so crazy and so insane. By the way, don't try and do a radio play in 12 days. Uh, for every day having an episode, it was, yeah, it took hours to edit that thing together. Um, so I did it, but I forced myself through it. And it actually helped me to realize that I could turn around, and I'm gonna repeat what I said in a podcast not too long ago, fuck you guys! All the negative people out there on the internet, fuck you! I wanted, actually, can we have a big, just one big, right? okay, on three, ready? Just, okay, ready? One, two, three, fuck you! Exactly! Because it's so important for you to be able to stand up for yourself on the internet, because essentially the whole thing is that you're fighting against the ether. Most of the people, like most of the comments I got, aside from the few that I knew, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know they were... I have a podcast where I get like 2,000 downloads each episode. I'm like, who are these people? Listening to me going, so I have a pug story again. It's like, what? <laughs> like, it's, it's so strange how this world works for podcasting. Is that you have, if you've been doing it for a long time, you just kind of give up. You don't care anymore. Because it, it's more about the craft. It's more about the thing. So, doing something insane is what you need to do in order to power through these kind of negative things. Because eventually you will run into somebody who's like, I don't like your face, and it's like, I'm sorry, and I'll get naked now, and it'll be fine. Um, so, <laughs> one person laughed at the nude joke. All right, thanks. Um, so, uh, yeah, so being able to like harness the energy of the creative part of yourself is really the, the sort of the key, and, and that's what I mean by insanity, because creativity is an insane process. You, you find something you like, you hate it, then you love it again, and then you do it again, and five times after you've done like five, I always tell this to my clients, please record five episodes before you post anything, and let's listen to them together and actually find out what it is that you're trying to say, uh, unlike this presentation. Um, <laughs> And then the next thing is recognize when to get out of your way. And that for me was a big stumbling block up until last December. I mean, again, I've written books about this stuff and I was sitting there going, yes, microphone, you and I are gonna do something together at some point, but no. And then it got even worse. I would actually record stuff and then I would delete it. And I did that for so long, for like the last three years. I've lost like, I don't know, hundreds of hours of me just musing about life, doing kind of stuff, whatever. And then just never seeing the light of day. Uh, for the people that know me, how many times do I post uh, on, my, on my podcast? One fortnight. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I... I did three this week. That's true. I did three posts this week. I was very proud of that. Um, so that's what I had to do. So I had to actually do that insane thing because I recognized that the only thing holding me back was just me. So then, of course, as I tell everyone, uh, just hit the record button already. And that is probably the 
worst thing that people or, sorry, people think that is the worst thing ever because they need to write a script. They've got to write, okay, hang on, no, wait a second, we got to get in here. All right, okay, so let's uh, write that in, okay, so there we go. So, you know, doing different things because they think that they need to actually read their script as if they're doing a radio show. And, I, and that is one of the things that I think when people start podcasting, don't write anything out. Get used to actually doing the process. If you actually hit the record button and start talking about, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anything. Anything that pops into your mind. You could talk about yesterday you went to fly a kite. Or for me, I cuddled with my dog for an entire day and no one knew and I was at home by myself. <laughs> yes, I was totally productive yesterday uh, watching Netflix and cuddling. And, but that's what the episode could be about. And it doesn't even, you don't have to post it, you don't have to do anything with it. But the process, the actual process of doing it is really, really crucial. Because the one thing that I find, and with all of my clients, the biggest hurdle they find is actually writing and forming thoughts. To actually say, okay, um, like uh, in that previous, who was here for the presentation just before? So there was that, the, the post at the very beginning where somebody, uh, he'd written out like how a post is formed. Okay, sure. It was two paragraphs too long. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like something to fly past my head. But in reality, um, being able to actually write stuff down is so hard for people because they think that they think that because they have access to Twitter that they can write. And I'm sorry, my degree was in English literature, specializing in British poetry. Guess where that got me? <laughs> um, <laughs> So every so often, that, that education rears its ugly head and, and starts to really criticize people, which I don't say it. By the way, if you have a negative thing to say on the internet, don't say it. Yeah. Uh, that is the best rule I learned. Um, because I had a celebrity slap me down, which I was kind of thankful for uh, one day, many years ago. But um, I totally derailed myself again. Um, Yes, they can't write. So basically, yeah, just because you can write out text on a computer screen, don't do it. I actually have all of my uh, clients that I teach, teach blogging to or writing, essentially, is I force them to write their posts by hand for like the first five things that they want to do. Because it slows your brain down. Your hand limits what your brain can pump out. On typing, it's much faster. If you're really a good typist, you know, you can just dump all kinds of stuff. But if you actually allow your brain to kind of go, okay, let's actually form a proper sentence, let's actually form a proper thing, it, it gets so much better. And they actually learn a hell of a lot more because then they turn around and they try and do it in an electronic form and it's able to give them pause to actually go, okay, well, what actually should I say rather than what I think I should say? So, if you know the difference, what you should versus... There's only like a few people nodding. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people like, maybe I've lost them all. Okay. Oh, a question, yes. A question. Was there a tipping point when you went from you had this thing and you shut down completely because of all this negative energy poured onto you um, that made you start? You said you did the 12 Days of Christmas podcast, but what was it that made you push back? Say, fuck you, to come out with that first, fuck you. I'm a creative, I'm a special, I'm a wonderful person, I'm unique. I, I should put my voice out there. So For me, it was a phone call at the end of November from a publisher that said, Hey Shane, remember the book you wrote a couple of years ago? We totally want you to write another one. Um, can you do it? And I paused. I paused for just that little bit too long. You realize, why am I pausing? What is stopping me from doing this? Because I... I have all this knowledge in my head. Of course I'd like to share it in another kid's book. By the way, the book I wrote was all illustrated and all fancy and stuff. Um, which uh, gave me pause. So that made me angry. The fact that I had been made angry. Now this is the weird thing is that I don't get angry very often. It's very hard to really piss me off. Because I'm kind of one of those guys who's like, eh, that's him. Eh, that's them. Which now I know, five years ago would have been great. But... The fact that I got angry now really made me even more angry. So I said, of course I will do it. When is, when is the due date? And they said, January 17th. And this was like November 30th. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm going away for the holidays. What? So 
again, that tapped into the whole insane thing. Of course I'll write a book in a completely unreasonable amount of time. Which, by the way, I have two chapters left, and it will be published in September, I think? So, look forward to that, because I will. Um, thanks for clapping. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, the fact that I got angry, it made me angry that I got angry, so to answer your question. Thank you. Um, but essentially, uh, when I had this conversation with my neighbor over a pint, um, it became more of a mantra for myself. Because then, uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, when I was sort of preparing what the hell was I going to talk about, uh, the coroner showed up to our building and wheeled out, sadly, one of our neighbors that passed away in his sleep, and it was really, you know, he was a great guy, it's very sad. Um, and I was standing uh, down in the lobby with a bunch of neighbors that knew him, and we were saying, oh, it's really horrible, and, you know, the, the guys, you know. But the fact that he was being wheeled out in this body bag on a gurney, um, the first thing that popped in my mind was, oh, it's too bad he's gone, it's really horrible, his family's going to be devastated. But oh my God, that's it. That's all we have. And it reinforced me to kind of say, yes, this is what you should be saying to yourself. If you ever doubt yourself, if you ever get negative shit, if you ever, ever pause just a little bit too long, that's what you should say to yourself. Because if you don't, you're not going to enjoy it. Even if you hit the record button and talk. I've had so many episodes where it's been like, I'm just not feeling it. I don't want to force myself through this. You know, I really don't want to. So that comes across in the audio. That really comes across, which is probably why I got all those negative comments. Maybe I had a bad thing, but I don't remember now because I deleted it because I wanted to ban it from my memory. Um, yes? On that note about feeling it, um, when you're doing personal podcasts, how do you fight that filter that it's too personal or a boring subject or I'm not feeling it. Like how do you get over that hurdle and stop? I made more podcasts. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, I actually divided uh, many years ago when I started doing this, I, I had this real problem with, God am I really boring? Like because I really had that thing of like uh, I so I actually made a podcast that I had res restrictions around. Um, which, since I'm connected to a monitor and I'm a nerd, I'm going to show you anyway. Um, by the way, when you type, if you ever look for my uh, website, type in the .ca, do not go to the .com. <laughs> I won a trademark battle with them, by the way, um, in 1999, but whatever. So, just to illustrate uh, the number of podcasts that I've been involved with, um, <laughs> these are them. And there's actually a bunch down here, too. But those aren't important. We don't want to talk about them. <laughs> what, no heckling? Um, but essentially, yeah, so I divided it into uh, a couple things. The Sound of Awesome is a podcast where I just walk. I have to be going from one point to another, and those are the most boring episodes ever, because I could be talking about... I uh, recorded one the other night, first time in Toronto, by the way. I've never been here before. Uh, East, for me, is like... I don't know, Chilliwack. Um, <laughs> so uh, the fact that I came out uh, here, uh, I was uh, walking. From, I was told, take the uh, from Union Station, take the uh, the the, the uh, subway up here. I'm like, no, it's a click and a half. I'm gonna walk it. What the hell? I'm a West Coaster. Come on. You know, we had cherry blossoms. Um, Shane's body was wheeled out in a gurney today. <laughs> um, so there's about a, a hundred and thirty odd episodes of that one over the last few years. Um, and then of course I have the one that I like to do. Uh, that's me, and the, by the way, in this photograph the tape recorder is actually on the floor. So you can see how young I was when I was recording stuff. So I call myself the first podcaster, 1976. I have proof. Um, and then uh, for my spouse she's like, I want a podcast too! And I'm like, well you're not doing it over here. So we had to make another one. And one of my genetic problems uh, is when my family comes over to visit, where do all the shoes go in your home? Do they go by the front door? No. In my home, they're always on the, you know, in the living room. And uh, so that's where that comes from. Then I have this one here, which of course is about beer. 
Uh, it's actually a vlog. Come check it out every Wednesday night about 9.30 Pacific. Uh, you're probably asleep by then, but anyway. Um, then The Late Hour, which is a podcast where I talk about deeper things, like philosophy and stuff like that. Um, this is one that I don't do anymore, uh, but I still have it here because we do about 70 or 80 episodes where we made fun of uh, crim dumb criminals, you know, like criminals that they got arrested because they called the police themselves, that kind of stuff. Um, actually, I think uh, she's in town now. Uh, she moved here a couple years ago. Uh, she does a comedy thing, which I cannot remember the name of. Uh, never mind. Um, so check her out if you can find her. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't remember the name of the show. Anyway. So that's, to, so, to answer your long, my, your very simple question, my long-winded way of talking, uh, I just divided things up, because I wanted to have, this is more of a curated thing, and I wanted to have, this is a curated thing, but uh, the one over there is the sound of awesome is just me being as boring as, as people can get, so. Um, what time is it? All right, we have lots of time before lunch, so I'm gonna talk for another 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> but no, I actually wanted to sort of, Basically, all I really wanted to get out of that was the mantra that just remember in the back of your mind that if you ever run into some sort of negativity or any kind of hesitation in, in podcasting or anything you're creating really on, specifically online, um, just to remember that, uh, say something really simple like that, like the one, two, three rule, the whole counting to pause your mind. Um, and by the way, uh, that sort of roughs out to about three seconds. The, you only have so many Friday nights left, so, um, so you go out and drink, why not? Um, okay, so I'm going to shut up and answer any questions because I've got lots of answers. Uh, sorry, I'm going to keep So, after you had your turnaround, have you undeleted that original post? I still have it. It's just not online. Um, which I should actually, wait a minute. Actually, it's probably still on archive.org. And if you are a beginning podcaster, tomorrow I'm talking, I think, in this room again. Uh, I'm going to be showing people how to use archive.org with blogger.com as a free way of uh, starting a podcast. Um, so come check that out. Um, but I think it's actually probably still at archive.org now I'm thinking about it. So it is probably no, still I mean, there. I mean, just for you. Why but would you not undelete that and just have it in your own record now that you've said fuck you to, to the haters? You know what? I will republish it to, sometime tonight if I'm not falling down on whatever street is outside. So what is it about? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on this one. Tune in tomorrow and find out. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow, yes. Tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the Shanecast where you're going to be listening to whatever the hell I won't tell you right now. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's still a sore point for me, so I, I kind of... I'll, but for you... I will do it. So, sometime between tomorrow and noon. Or tonight, today and noon. Tomorrow. Sorry, yeah. yeah well, if you that begins to be a of whales after that, possibly. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you said don't say anything negative online. Now, if in your podcast, uh, part of it is a commentary on something or your opinion on something, would you include that? Like, if you say, I don't like something, you consider that saying something negative I, online? In those ways, yes. I don't like this because of these five reasons. Um, the thing that I, that I always stress to people not to say negative things online is the, you know, don't say that somebody can suck a whale's dick. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. I mean, there's so many other things I can come up with with my improv background, but I won't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Try and be as constructive as possible, yeah, to, to, even if it's, um, and this is the other thing, too, about the internet. It, it, who's heard of the, fra of the, of the phrase, uh, uh, the outrage bandwagon, uh, where the internet likes to jump on stuff? Um, yeah, that, that too. Um, that is its own set of problems. But essentially, um, what I tend to do online a lot is I like to watch. I don't tend to jump and speak because I'm... As nerdy as I am, and as nerdy as I've been, like ripping apart computers at a young age and all that kind of stuff, um, I don't speak quickly. I don't jump on bay. I don't. I'm not the the early adopter. I like to wait because I see stuff and I'm like, you know what? That technology's cool, but I don't know. I don't think I'm going to buy that phone this year. I don't think I'm going to get that. Maybe I'll wait a couple of, of generations of whatever it might be, and. Uh, and that's actually served me quite well to actually be able to um, talk to people online. Because I always tell my clients, uh, 
you really, uh, if, you, if you have something negative, pause and just think about it and then try and turn it into a constructive thing. So, um, which is very hard because with the way that the internet behaves right now, uh, people are so quick to be like, well, that guy's an asshole, um, which I actually think was something somebody said about me. But anyway, um, there was a question over here. Do you follow Stormy Daniels on Twitter? I don't. <laughs> you should. She would inspire you. Really? As a fellow Will Dicks on her file. <laughs> 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 I bet you woke up this morning never thinking you would ever say that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but she slays trolls like nobody's business. Do you, who, who remembers uh, Gamergate? Do you guys remember that a couple years ago? Yeah. Um, anyway, basically some women were attacked online, blah, 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 blah. But the thing that came out of that was there was actually this, this one uh, lady who was sending uh, tweets that she received to the parents of the people who tweeted at her. And I thought that was amazing. Like, it was very, sort of very matter of fact. Dear so-and-so, your son sent me this thing about how I like to, you know, choke on this or however many times I should die in this way. And, I just like to have a talk with him. It was actually very reasonable. Like I, I was surprised, and and they actually got response. She posted on Twitter as well about, yeah, you know, I got this from so and so's parents. Remember when I was supposed to die by leaping off of this, that, and the other thing? Or... So and you, and she got a lot of apologies from people. And uh, yeah, so uh, there was some. I saw some hint, a couple hints. Did I? Well, am I seeing things? <laughs> I'm holding it. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, yeah, we're done posing. So you write children's books? Yes. Do you it sounds like a bad thing that you said it out loud. <laughs> so do, you, do they read them? Oh yeah. Yeah? I actually, the last book that I wrote, the one for kids, which was a, a very general kind of, here's what vlogging is, here's what podcasting is, here's what uh, vlogging is. Um, actually, I had a lot of people saying nice things about it that were the parents of the kids. Um, because then I had a lot of people sending me emails saying, which actually, by the way, for the book stuff, I got some positive stuff. So, and and by the way, I did respond to people that did say negative things, like on Amazon and stuff like that. Um, and one person said uh, the book was really basic, and I responded, <laughs> "It's for kids, and you're 45." <laughs> um, but anyway, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I got I got some feedback like that that was um, usually the parents. Yeah, I don't think I got any from kids. Kind of think of it, not themselves, not directly. I have it on my coffee table, by the way. Kids are, yes, well, they are, but um, <laughs> kids tend to focus right now when they're growing up. They're, I mean, who has young kids right now? Around, you know, yeah. And how, much, how many hours are they spending on YouTube? So, exactly. So, a lot of kids' exposure is sort of in the video realm uh, right now uh, because tablets are so accessible and whatnot. But, um, Getting them interested in writing, so sort of, they have to get a bit older, I find. Time's up, Shane! Oh, that's what it was on TV. Uh, there was a question, sorry, back. Uh, it's a little technical, and I'm sorry I missed the first bit. Nope, that's okay. Um, I just, I'm just teaching the first ever course at Art College on podcasting for our students at Centennial. Right. And they're about to launch 40 podcasts next week. I have to grade them all. Anyway, but the nice. point is, <laughs> we were, so we're really excited. But the point I want to ask is that we were told that because of the AODA in Ontario, that just, I don't know if you're familiar with what that. What the hell is the AODA? You have to put transcripts of everything. Right? Accessibility. accessibility. Oh, the accessibility rules. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's a session tomorrow, but whatever. Um, but you said, you know, don't have a script, just talk. So do you have to do, what do you do, what help can we get for these students to not transcribe at all? I'm going to get very nerdy about this because I do this quite often. Um, if you do not want to spend money on transcription services, but you want to learn something about video, take uh, a video editor of some sort, uh, put your audio into that, upload it, but don't post it publicly on YouTube, and YouTube's automatic uh, transcription service will, after I think it's 12 to 24, four-ish hours will pump out what it thinks it heard. And then you can actually take that text, and you're going to have to edit it because the machine that's is doing it. How good is that? yeah. that's, that's the, I mean, it's all going to have to be edited anyway. Um, there is another service that's owned by a company called Rev, uh, mm -hmm. called, the service is called Teamy, um, which is, I think is T-E-M-I, I think, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and it is essentially a machine learning uh, way of transcription, and it's pretty good as well. YouTube does a, a weirdly very 
great job at it. But um, it doesn't matter. Anyone, any service that require that does not have a human being involved will require some <coughs> some luck. Um, and also, the other thing that I do, if you're really really nerdy, is uh, you can take Google Docs and you can actually run your audio through uh, the Google Docs typing system. And I've actually sat there, I've played the audio. At, uh, and just let it run, and Google Docs will write it all, all out cool. for you. It does require a bit of nerdiness to get uh, to figure out how the audio works through, you know, like taking your speakers and putting them through your system so that they can hear it. So, but YouTube is the is YouTube is the quickest hack. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so there's there's all and, and on a note about accessibility, um, part of my job is I have some clients who are blind, I have some clients who are deaf, and uh, I'm always getting people to talk about uh, accessibility as well as for podcasts because um, I only am only just starting I've actually gone back to older podcasts and I'm, I've been transcribing them so um, the only problem actually the only problem they might run into is if you have more than one person talking mm -hmm. um, it gets most of it but once you start having the people they get really ex excited and animated and they talk over each other mm -hmm. All bets are off for any machine to kind of go, oh, blah, Barbie doll, and that's all you get. So, <laughs> so it's, it, and that's actually one thing about podcasting in, in general is that, especially when you get into video, and, and if you don't like writing, first off, if you hate writing, podcasting is where I find a lot of people start, and they kind of migrate the other way. But um, it is a lot of work, and it will require some. I mean, you don't have, you know, not everyone can go to school. Uh, not everyone can, uh, you know, uh, decide to drop everything and, and say, oh, "I'm going to be a podcaster now because there's so much money in it." <laughs> no, unless you write books about it. <laughs> um, by the way, if you buy my books, by the way, I do not get a cut of it. It was a totally writer for hire kind of job, so. I would tell you to buy 10 or 12, but I get no benefits, so buy 10 or 12. I uh, give it to your friends. Just get my name out there. Um, I'm so humble. Um, any other questions? Uh, I mean, I can get really nerdy, or I can get really general. Um, I'm trying to get comfortable with the process of podcasting, so I carry this around. Um, I wanted to ask you, can you tell us what the last podcast you heard that you found interesting? It had and nothing you, to do with true can crime. Can I hand you this? With, yeah, sure. Thanks. What is that? It's just a handy recording. By the way, this is a Zoom. Zoom. I got the H2, but not not this one. I don't have the fancy stuff. That's all I'm on here. <laughs> <laughs> when I get used to yeah. the process, I actually forgot what the hell your question was. The question was could, can you tell us what uh, the last podcast you heard that you found interesting? It had nothing to do with true crime. <laughs> I gotta say, as much as I love the CBC and the NPR and all these big, huge podcasts that are getting played, I am so not the audience. Because I don't care what crime was committed, it just, it just bores me for some reason. Didn't you have a crime podcast? Isn't that what you said? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> the one where I was running from the SNL. <laughs> that was the yeah. making fun of, of bad criminals. But, uh, when you go on to Craigslist <laughs> and you look for stupid criminals, you find so much stuff there. I don't know why Craigslist posts really ridiculous things about how criminals are dumb. Which A is duh. Um, but uh, 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 to answer your question, Shane, thank you. Um, the most interesting podcast I've ever listened to um, is um, it's a fiction podcast. Uh, which why am I blanking on the title? Where's my phone? Hang on, let me let me pull it up for you because okay. it's. I'm only halfway through. Um, Night Vale. You heard of Night Vale? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Um, <laughs> Welcome to Night Vale. Well, thank you. Um, those types of podcasts, the ones that are fiction, that try to push the boundaries of how to actually tell a story. Because story, I mean, who knows how to tell a story? You know the structure, beginning, middle, end, you know, conflict, etc. Um, 
the best thing that you can do is to listen to podcasts like that because they take that and they sort of turn it 90 degrees one way because it's like uh, listening to... Who, who remembers who Art Bell was? Remember Art Bell? It was kind of like that, where it's sort of this uh, weird stuff is happening in the town. Actually, what was the one? Uh, Limetown. I haven't listened to Limetown, but it sounds very similar, where um, stuff is happening. But it's a guy sort of in his, you know, trailer with a big, huge antenna going, so anyway, down at the corner of 5th and Main, it's not there anymore. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I love that, where it's just those little twists where you kind of, and they just happen again and again and again. And I've actually used that a few times to say, which is kind of what I was trying to do in December with my uh, Christmas thing, um, is take all these ideas that you have floating around your head and actually force them into a story. Because it'll teach you that, ooh, that doesn't work. That needs to be cut, or that needs to, oh, that actually, no, I could move that to like episode five. And it's a very interesting way to actually pull that off. Because it's like a crash course in storytelling, a crash course in editing, a crash course in actually planning episodes. Because uh, I find that everyone, when they first start, they try to jam everything into the first episode. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, okay, then there's this thing, and, th and then it's like nine hours long, and then it's like they have such a hard time editing. Like, no, no, just take one of those kernels and make that episode one. Take the next, what, what, what naturally flows. And at the same time, it doesn't matter because if it if you screw it up and you know you can fix it later you can like post, reposting an episode one deleted um, but stuff like that you can actually go back and, and make amends or you change the story to you know match whatever it is you thought you might have messed up earlier because it could be a happy accident um, yeah does that end does that even yeah thank you I mean, uh, yeah so at the end of the day just hit the damn record button and start talking to people. <laughs> um, it's now five after. Uh, we started late, so I'm hungry. I'm three hour. I'm still nine o'clock or ten o'clock for me. So get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>